Right, so what we'll do is we will whiz through uh, the uh, rings, polymers and analysis paper for June 2013. So, first of all, question one, triglyceride, triester. Now what may freak you out a little bit is where they've drawn it and they've got different chains coming up here. Um, but the main thing to identify is you've got your ester groups and it is a triglyceride. So it's hydrolyzed with hot aqueous sodium hydroxide, no sodium hydroxide. Give the systematic name of the alcohol that is formed from that hydrolysis. Well, you know from your note um, that we, we've looked at um, what tri which trial you have to start with. And of course, it's propane. One, two, three, tri -hull. Draw the structures of the organic products from this hydrolysis. So, if you have a look, and now remember, you know, go crazy, draw on the molecule, you're going to hydrolyze your ester groups. So you're going to break them down there, you're going to break that one there, and you're going to break that one there. So just draw them out. Um, give the structures, you don't have to draw all of them out. So for this one, CH3, CH2, make sure that you get your stereochemistry right for your double bond there. CH2 pi, it's in sodium hydroxide, so you've got to make sure that you make the sodium salt. If you notice, these two guys are the same, so draw them out there. Remembering, of course, you're going to just do that. Those are the same, so you need to draw one. So you've got one mark for getting that structure right, another mark for getting that structure right, and then another mark for realising that you form the sodium salts of each of those as well. Right, a nice easy one then. Um, suggest why people, people consuming large quantities of this type of goat's milk might be more risk of suffering from chronic heart disease. The key thing to mention is if you go back, one of those trans fatty acids, sorry, one of those fatty acids was the trans group, and it's the trans fatty acid which causes uh, cholesterol. So you had to say for one mark, one of the fatty acids is trans, and for your next mark, this can cause um, bad cholesterol. Right, so on to the excitement of question two. For amino phenol, they've drawn it for you, can behave as an acid and a base. State how it can behave as a base. Right, you've got to nail this one, this comes out a lot. What atom is it going to be? It's the lone pair on the nitrogen atom can accept a proton. Oh, yes, I can accept it. Well, yeah, it accepts yeah, a proton. Yeah. yeah. So it's the lone pair on the nitrogen atom that can accept a proton. That comes up a lot. So you've got to make sure you put the lone pairs on the nitrogen atom and it accepts a proton. Right. It could be produced by the reaction of four nitrophenol. Write an equation. So, there you go, um, draw it out like that. You should know that you need six square bracket hydrogens for that. That gives you the molecule that they want plus two H2O. So that is pretty much straight from your note. You're just gonna replace your O2s with H2. And then you make two waters as well. Right, okay, so four nitrophenol can be produced from four bromophenol. You complete the mechanism for this reaction um, using the NO2 plus electrophile. Okay, so first of all, NO2 plus. My first step is going to be the electrons come out of the double bond um, to the nitro group. So you've got to make sure that you're intermediate. So you draw up your benzene ring. Your OH stays the same. Then you're going to have your NO2 on one, your bromine on the other, and make sure that you break the ring at that. You know, so there's some, some people I've been to drew it the other way around. It's got to be there. Then the final stage is that that bond, the electron, that bond are going to go there to give you your product, like so, and it's 
going to give you BR plus. Okay, so with something like BR minus going on. Remember, if you start with something like a plus, you can end with something like a plus as well. So you take a minute, take in the joy of all these different reactions. So I'm starting off with four amino phenol. The first thing they want me to do is identify the reagent in reaction one. It's just changing that um, NH2 group into NH3Cl minus. So it's got to be, of course, HCl for that one. Um, name the product in reaction two. Okay, now the correct um, name um, for this one is actually going to be four amino. 3,5-dibromophenol. It doesn't matter, you can do it the other way. Um, it doesn't matter. So it was four amino, 3,5-dibromophenol. Uh, um, um, some of you just swapped it the other way. Where no, I found it the other way. Sorry? You could put, you could put three, five, five, Romo. Uh, can I come and have a look? And then finally, for this little bit, my equation for reaction two. So you're starting with four amino phenol. So draw that boy out. You are adding, you've got to get, and you've substituted two bromines. So which part of the course does this bit come from? Is come from, of course, our phenol chemistry. So I've got to add two Br2s and I make two HBrs. Yeah. Okay. And a nice easy one in the box, which is the final one, draw this reaction. So there you go, there's your benzene ring. You're reacting it with sodium, so of course, sodium reacts with the Group to give you the O minus NA plus. What would be our product? It's going to be hydrogen gas. Yeah, that's right. You didn't mean it. Right, so this is typical of the organic papers. They give you a new reaction that you haven't met before, um, and this is using a copper one halide to replace an N2 plus group with an X group. So whichever halide you've got there replaces it, and it can be simple. Synthesize only using four amino, sorry, compound C. We can use four amino products and other standard lab reagents, and it's going to give us now a flow chart. A um, possible use for compound C, of course, is a dye. Yeah. Okay, good. So, right, let's go through this. So, the first one, I have got to go from four amino phenol to this. What reagents am I going to use? It's going to be NaNO2 and HCl, and the conditions is below 10 degrees, yeah. So it's NaNO2. Right, reaction two, um, to give me compound B, which I need to form um, the, uh, the second bit. So um, the reagent to give me that uh, is going to be um, C-U-I because if you look I put an I on the end there so I've replaced that end to, okay I've replaced, if I use C-U-I my compound B becomes that on there um, and then finally, my conditions to couple these two together is, of course, going to be alkaline conditions. I need sodium hydroxide for that. Don't make it your own question, you don't have to do anything. Well, we're now moving on to um, polymers. What is meant by a condensation polymer? Whenever you're asking what is meant by this, you must use the word monomer in your answer. So it's when monomers join together, and another product is eliminated. A small molecule is eliminated. So did please. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, did I not give you the mic? Oh, no, no, no. Um, right. Um, the student hydrolyzed a sample and analyzed the amino acids that were formed. 
she found that they contained glycine, um, stained all the structures of two other amino acids that were formed. Obviously, uh, one of this bit's giving you glycine, um, the other one is, could be that one, so NH2 to give you that one, that's come from that boy there, and then you've got this one here. So I've just broken this there. So you've got to be able to sort that out. Uh, right, so isoelectric point is 5.8 for glycine. Define the term isoelectric point and draw the structure. So um, obviously I'm going to form the zitterion here because I am at the isoelectric point. So remember your plus and your minus. And the isoelectric point is uh, going to be your pH at which the zitterion exists. So the student then hydrolyzed the structure of uh, the serocene protein, analyzed amino acid, name the process by which uh, TLC separates this is adsorption, so AD sorption. Um, for your RF value, estimate the RF value for X. So it's going to be um, it's going to be your baseline, so it's that distance divided by that distance there. You should have got anything between 0.53 to 0.62, which means it is that boy there, because he is in the range. So again, quite straightforward. Okay, so nice polymer now. One, I've obviously got a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. I'm going to draw these two boys together. So that OH is going to go, um, you know, you don't have to do it. This is a mixture of skeletal and so on. And then you've got your two. Obviously, the danger, what is the danger here whenever you draw a hexagon? Draw a hexagon? Well, no, it's all good. You want to put a ring in it because you think it's uh, better. Um, Anyway, so that is your opinion, but yeah, you're right, you should put your forms on the end to show that it's actually a polymer. Okay, so polymer D has been developed by a textile industry. The repeat unit is shown below. Um, how can you draw the structures? Well, hopefully, you can see that that's going to give you your dial. No, I don't think it photocopies. Oh, well, she got the mark for that. Where's your That would have helped a lot. Yeah, it would have helped a lot. Okay, so <laughs> those are your two. There you go. I agree, actually. Yeah. So the lines really would have helped on this one. Oh my god, they really would have. Okay. Anyway. I agree. You're going to break it there, aren't you? I was like, how do these, I was like, how is that going to be joined? I was like, how can we polarise that? So, because you formed a carbon carbon bond here, like, it's got to be. It's yeah. got to be. Going going how can we join them together? Without the lines of stuff, basically. Oh, so, what are you saying? So, because you've you made a carbon carbon bond there, as part of polymerisation, you always do that for addition. So this boy has got to have a double bond there. So I think had you had that dotted line. Sorry? They both have to have a double bond. Yeah, he had a double bond yeah. up here. So I thought that was 